Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Aviator St. Helena, episode 4. My name is Kabir and I'm the host on the show with Warwick. Today on the show will be joined by our fellow aviation enthusiast Thomas, as well as the compliance manager of St. Helena Airport Limited, James Kellett. Today on the show we will be talking about what South Africa's Alert Level 1 lockdown announcement means for St. Helena and its weekly SA Airlink flights. There are more Aviator St. Helena videos on the horizon, so stay tuned and enjoy the episode. This Aviator's St. Helena episode is produced in partnership with St. Helena Airport Limited. To find out more about St. Helena's airport, visit www.sthelenaairport.com. To find out about visiting St. Helena, visit the St. Helena Tourism website at www.sthelenatourism.com. Recently, President Sul Ramaphosa announced that South Africa will be moving to alert level 1 lockdown due to the declining number of COVID-19 cases in South Africa. Level 1 would permit international travel to a specific list of countries throughout the world. So James, what does this mean for SA Air Link's weekly service from Johannesburg to St Helena? As for South Africa's recent decision to move to Level 1 status, it remains to be seen whether this will result in the scheduled air service between South Africa and St Helena recommencing. It is likely that St Helena's strict quarantine requirements will deter all but the most determined people from travelling to the island, which in turn acts as a disincentive for the commencement of air travel to and from St Helena. And neither the St Helena government nor the air service provider, Airlink, is likely to want to fly near empty planes to and from the island, and certainly not in the near future anyway. So, and given that uh, St Helena remains COVID-free, St Helena politicians and government officials will want to keep it that way, particularly given the vulnerability of the resident population to COVID. So it is entirely possible that regular flights from South Africa, even on a monthly basis, may not start until, let's say, 2021, particularly when there are three more flights to and from the UK planned for October, December and January. Thanks for that, James. Um, and it's very good analysis. And we're going to be having a discussion just now um, where Warwick and Thomas will um, kind of discuss with me about a few of the points that you've raised. So um, after the break, you'll be hearing us with an interesting discussion about what everybody in the studio thinks about this move to level one and the impact on St. Helena tourism. Um, But I would like to inform you before um, you hear the discussion that you will notice occasionally there's a bit of rustling noise. Um, and that is actually um, due to some audio software. And unfortunately, we only caught the rustling noise as I'm editing this video currently. So apologies for that. But um, I would like it known that for future SH episodes, we've actually already worked out new audio software. Um, but unfortunately, this episode um, hasn't been able to use that software just yet. So stay tuned. And um, this is going to be a once-off moment. So apologies for that. Enjoy the discussion. You're listening to The Aviator St. Helena, produced in partnership. Right, so um, welcome back to the Aviator St. Helena, and in our virtual studio today I'm joined by Thomas and Warwick, and we're going to start off by talking about what lockdown level one means for St. Helena and its tourism. So very recently President Cyril Ramaphosa announced this level one, and I think South Africans were extremely relieved. And the truth is, I think it's all going to be fairly short-lived because we're already seeing now, we're recording this a few weeks after the announcement, we can see that, um, you know, already these COVID cases are increasing. And this is really just a few days after Level 1 was implemented. This is not months later, but rather a week, if not anything, if not less. And so if it's rising within the first few days, what does it mean for the coming weeks ahead? And so it's really difficult to see what this means for St. Helena. Obviously, politicians do not want um, St. Helena to um, have COVID because, you know, it's one of the few countries in the world which has not suffered um, from this pandemic. Um, Although it has suffered, you know, financially through economic activity, tourism, etc., it's not suffered in terms of illness. 
And so they want to keep it, you know, empty. But at the same time, you know, is there going to be a scheduled air service? What does this mean for SA Airlink? What do you think about it, Warwick? Um, well, also with regards to, um, you know, the quarantine facility. Now, in, um, in, in, if, if a flight comes in, sorry, um, if a flight comes in, then they've got to quarantine, all the passengers on board will have to quarantine for two weeks um, before they can resume their usual life on the island. Um, this is just to get away any traces or um, strains of the virus which have come through or which, or which could have come through um, on the flight. And so then you've got to look at how sustainable is it to have quite a few flights coming into St. Helena when how um, easy is it to carry out if you've got a few fleets, uh, flights coming to St. Helena and you've only got so much um, space for quarantine? I mean, how is this going to work, Bia? Yeah, that's the other thing. So I think we may have chatted about this in our Titan Airways episode, which you should definitely go watch. It's quite an interesting one indeed. But we were saying, you know, that in one of these Titan flights, there weren't enough quarantine beds to facilitate the cockpit crew as well. And so they had to make um, adjustments for them to do it. Um, and so St. Helena is so small. And while they fly 757, it's not, you know, they doesn't have maximum capacity for various reasons. And so I think, you know, these flights are extremely planned. Certainly the Titan ones coming in October, November and December and January, I think. And these are coming on a month-to-month -month basis currently because of the demand. And the thing is, I think they're all very structured, very planned. The government, SHG, requires you to fill out a form about are you coming, if you're coming, how, when, you know, all of the details. And so also same thing with the cargo, what is coming onto the island, what isn't. And so when it's so planned, they're not going to overbook a flight, for instance, and then you're going to end up in a space where, you know, you can't come to quarantine. But as for SA Air Link's um, current service, I personally think that I think it's not going to happen on a regular basis because for Air Link, you're going to end up flying near empty planes because there's not as much demand from South Africa as there is perhaps in the UK, for instance. Because the UK is this hub where if you are living overseas in the US or anywhere else, really, you take one flight to the UK and then you can go direct to St. Helena through Titan Airways on their repatriation flight. And so from South Africa, I don't know what this is going to mean for the tourism sector. I mean, um, Tourism South Africa is already saying, go, ex go and look in your own backyard, you know, and they are promoting South African tourism. And while international flights are happening, there's so much that you need to do in order to go on one of those international flights. Warwick? I mean, also, as you, on your point, there's so much more exposure if you're flying through another separate country. Um, like, say, flying through South Africa. That means basically you've got to go from um, Europe because those flights are coming in the most often. Or if you're prepared to wait a bit longer, then you can come into South Africa from the U.S., um, but currently, um, it's just provided, it's just going through another country, which means another risk. It means that stepping out of the plane onto ground with lots more people on it than the, or like 50 or 60 on the plane with you. Um, so it's just a lot more exposure. And it is, are you willing to put yourself through that when there is the, I guess, possibility of a direct flight and I suspect um, or of going through the direct flight um, and I think a lot of people will look into this and you know we'll see some interesting outcomes in the future. Kabir? I think so and I think that you know while this Titan Airways stuff may be temporary obviously it's not feasible to commercially fly from the UK it would require a heavily subsidized route from the St. Helena government in order for the UK route to continue operating. Um, and so that's the same thing with Airlink at the moment is while it's of no commercial risk to Airlink, you're flying near empty planes and trying to fly to this island weekly, I don't think is realistic. But we even look at possibly monthly is even, you know, not really as realistic. We're nearing to the end of the year. We've got three months left of the year. And so 
even if they do start operating, why would you go on the SA Airlink flight rather than just picking up the direct flight from the UK to St. Helena? Um, Thomas, and then on to Warwick. Just on the Airlink thing, it's just, it's not only the financial problems for Airlink and these really like a spread out flights, just also environmentally, it's really not realistic to, to fly these like these these planes so for like have so little people and and pl- fly them so far apart it's just it's really you think about the impact on the environment and it's really not it's not worth it work and i guess also if you're looking also on the airlink thing um also if you're looking at airlink flying a monthly service and people are trying to come in from the uk well um, Titan Airways are currently also basically flying a monthly service. So why would you not go with the Titan Airways flight um, as opposed to flying into another country? If it's going to be the time, same, I guess, time um, area, if you know what I mean, with uh, one month and like one month. Um, so that will be interesting to see what happens. And I think if Air Lynx start up and they're doing maybe even two flights a month, then a bit of a question is, will Titan Airways reduce their flights or will they stop them completely? Or what do we think about this, Kabir? I also think, no, that's all very realistic on a kind of repatriation sector, people coming home. But we're looking now at the tourism sector before we start wrapping up. And interestingly, I don't know if there's scope to go to St. Helena. While St. Helena has no coronavirus, COVID-19, you know, there's still protocols in place. While going to the airport, obviously you have to, um, the new St. Helena Airport Limited um, slogan, protecting you, protecting us, protecting St. Helena, wearing your mask, sanitizing, socially distancing, all of that stuff in the airport terminal and obviously in the airplane and in South Africa even more because there's so much more risk here. And now once you've gone through all of that, which is quite the hassle, you get to St. Helena and you quarantine for two weeks. Now, 14 days may not seem like much, but if I'm going on a holiday, it's not preferable to be quarantining for 14 days. And when you're coming from South Africa, it's really quite risky at the moment. And so from a tourism sector, you know, it would only have to be super dedicated people, really dedicated people who love the island, who are willing to go back, quarantine, go through the necessary precautions, and then enjoy themselves. Warwick? Because that means basically you've got 14 days on either end. Um, And as we're seeing, the UK is going into strict lockdown again. So that's definitely going, it's like 14 days on either end. And that adds 28 days to your journey overall. Never um, minding the actual flights themselves, which take up another day. So that's 30 days. That's basically a month. Um, And you haven't actually started your holiday yet. You haven't actually done any, you haven't been out. Um, So it's just pointless in my mind. Unless you're planning on spending two months away, um, which is exposing you to the virus a lot, there's not really um, a point in my mind for going on holiday to somewhere where you're going to have to social uh, to quarantine for 14 days after landing, and then quarantine 14 days when you get back. It's just it's not worth all the effort. Kabir. Yeah, I think that's true. And and with the, on that point is, you know, you have to undergo a COVID test in South Africa prior to you leaving. If you pass the COVID test, you go on the plane. If you go to the country that requires mandatory quarantine, you quarantine. And then before you leave um, the country and before you enter South Africa, you have to get retested. And so all of this is, um, you know, I get if you're traveling for work or if you have family or, you know, anything like that. It's worth it in the end, totally worth it. But, you know, at the moment, if you're going for a holiday, unless, you know, you really want to escape COVID, then it may totally be worth it. But at the moment, I can't see a lot of people going to St. Helena for that very reason. Warwick? And, I mean, also when you say escape COVID, there are currently not many spots in the world where you can escape COVID, in which case... um, there only are a few places which you are able to go, um, which I don't think many people are aiming for. I think many people are aiming for staying safe from COVID, but not trying to escape it because escaping it means, I guess, 
a bit of a risk trying to escape it while you um, get to the point of escaping it. So whether you're going to St. Helena or other um, smaller or less infected countries around the world, you're still putting yourself at risk to um, get there. Definitely. That's totally true. But if you have an opinion or you're desperate to go back to St. Helena, leave us a comment below. Um, and we hope that we will we'll definitely be doing many more of these episodes um, talking about, you know, what the future holds. If there are any more updates from Titan Airways or Airlink, we'll be sure to let you know. COVID-19 has ripped apart many of the world's countries. St. Helena has yet to endure the COVID-19 pandemic in the way that other countries have. So, as more international flights come to the island, it's important that we remember to sanitize, social distance and wear our face mask. St. Helena Airport Limited and the Aviator St. Helena. Protecting you. Protecting us. Protecting St. Helena. Thanks for tuning in to this week's episode of the Aviator St. Helena. Special thank you to St. Helena Airport Limited. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, subscribe and enable notifications so that you'll get notified when we release a new video. There are many more Aviator St. Helena videos to come, so stay tuned, stay safe and happy flying.